great. So I want to say hello to Emma and Sheila from The Long Table and ask them to say a little bit about, uh, about their work. Hi. Sure. Um, so my name's Emma, I work at The Long Table um, working particularly on our food resilience. So The Long Table is, um, well we started out as a community canteen, um, so people coming for lunches and evening banquets, um, the evening banquets were pay as you feel, trying to make them accessible to as many people as possible. Um, and we source local food and use surplus um, with a, a vision of just reaching out everyone in our community and, and trying to be the, uh, a place that people can gather and um, yeah, bring, bring life to the community where we are and connecting people with their food sources as well and where their food is coming from. So thinking about that in a, in a practical way, but also um, thinking about people's health and life in a really sort of broad, holistic way, what can bring the community to kind of the fullest health? Yeah. And then lockdown happened for us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. which changed things. So we had to move to a different model. Yeah, we, we pivoted pretty quickly just as lockdown was on the horizon. So our, our lunches and our evening meals were no longer able to happen. And we started providing the same good nutritious food, but in a frozen format. So for us, uh, freezing it was uh, a mechanism to kind of ease some of the logistics of getting uh, good food out to lots of people. Um, and we started packaging things up and had to research very quickly how to do that in a, in a safe way. Um, and then people started catching on to what we were doing and saying, how can I help? How can I be part of it? Um, and we ended up leading a, a network of um, a number of community kitchens um, around the county of Gloucestershire, where we are, um, setting out to deliver 5,000 meals um, with the support of the, the diocese, helping fund some of that, um, and ending up delivering about 48,000 meals across the county, 80% um, of which went out for free. And in a way, that's where I come in, because I'm picking up the legacy of those relationships forged during those early days of COVID and lockdown. Now we've got community kitchens who are wanting to develop their offer and help it be sustainable. But we also know there's a need to feed ahead as people continue to be shielded. Um, for us in the UK, as with many places, we're heading into a recession. So all sorts of things are immediately um, apparent around need. Um, so our interim solution to that I guess is to situate what we've been calling freezers of love in all of our communities so we've got a take up now of between we've got around 12 confirmed freezers that are going out in our locality we're hosting one here and um, in the freezer of love is the frozen meals along similar lines to in lockdown seasonal ingredients some surplus cooked here beside our freezer of love here we've got a table where people can bring stuff they've grown so we have that lovely immediate loop where some of that food is cooked and then ends up in the freezer and um, there's a microwave right next to the freezer if someone wants to cook dinner here and now um, and it's all on donation basis so we have no idea when somebody walks through the door and helps themselves to a meal whether they're going to go online and give us a donation of 30 or 40 pounds for that food or whether they're going to take it for free now because they need it now and that's fine um overcoming some of the stigma around needing food uh, was very important to us and it's called the freezer of love because we operate from an abundance mentality we're really clear about that there is enough food for us all it isn't there we know that it's just the way it's shared is causing all the problems so our message is we have plenty and you're welcome to share it with us not we see you as somebody who's needy and therefore we're going to put food into your into your fridge um we're keen that people recognize all those points at which food is really crucial so this isn't just simply about poverty this is a new baby it is a loss of a job it is a difficult week all those times when you can express love through feeding or through food and um, we want the freezers of love to be a place hyper local hopefully hyper resilient examples of uh, a backstop there is always food there if you need it um, out in the community what's happening increasingly is that people want to go up the next level they want to cook to fill their own freezers and that's where we see the um, open food network being able to really take that to the next level potentially that um, we educating people about their own local supply making it easy for people to connect with those providers of food perhaps supplying food for themselves so that 
over a quite a small square foot. So in churches, community centres, hairdressers, you know, whatever space you've got available, you could have a simple crop swap. You could have an online access to food provided. You can have a freezer full of frozen meals that have been healthily cooked, potentially by a local chef, all on a donation basis that helps to stretch out everything that we've got and help it go further. Mm. So wish us luck, that's the plan. <laughs> we do, we do. Thank you so much for describing that. And it's early days yet in terms of our links with Open Food Network. And um, what, one of the things we've been talking about is that one of those pickup points could be existing food hubs. So qu quite local to you is Stradco Food Hub. Um, we're in conversations with them about them having some of your meals in their freezer, those products on their on their shop front so that people can order those products along with other products that they're, that they're buying. The difference being that your products would be for zero price with an option for people to click on your donate button and, and order those products along with their other shopping. And then those, those products would go out with, with other, other shop, other products or be picked up direct from the Stradco pickup point. And Emma, is it yeah. worth it a little bit? Sorry, go on. Go, go ahead, Sheila. Well, I was just going to say about the, the price point, Nick, just to make clear that we're, we're finding ways to express that so people understand what that money is going towards. So that it's there's a very clear price point that what they've done is pay something towards their meal, or they've covered the full cost of that meal, or they've just bought a meal for them and a neighbour. Yeah. And it might be a neighbour they haven't actually met, mm -hmm. but that, that directly means they funded somebody else to eat. So I think for your Stroud Co., you know membership that might be something that is very it makes it very simple for them to provide yeah. food for the people and mm -hmm. know exactly where them where their money's gone absolutely thank you sheena great and emma is it worth just briefly mentioning this idea of using the open food network also to source from local producers who might have surpluses that you could use to um yeah yeah, definitely. It's something I, I'm really excited about exploring, actually. Um, when we were only open uh, a couple of days a week uh, doing lunches, I was able to connect with the, the local farmers uh, near where we are and we plan our lunches in advance and I could go down and pick the kale from the fields and things. But as we're doing more and more, um, that's less and less feasible. Um, and we're also just wanting to, to grow more links with our, our local um, farmers and growers, um, celebrate them and what they're doing, connect them with our consumers. Um, and also make use of any surplus and gluts that they might have. Um, so at the moment we know a number of people, we're hoping to, to expand that and particularly when um, Sheila talked about people in the community who are also wanting to cook for their freezers. Um, we're looking at a mechanism that would enable uh, through a long table shop front um, that would be uh, quite set quite privately I think so the settings would be uh, just uh, visible to, to us initially. Um, producers could list their surplus items and their products um, and we would have a window of time which our, our chefs at, at our main base could, could check what they wanted and order that um, and then we could have a, a secondary listing where we then release it more widely to our um, community kitchen so that they get their um, options of what surplus is available in their vicinity as well um, which would be yeah a, a great efficiency for us and a, a great way of introducing people in the community who would be cooking to, to people who are supplying really locally that they may, may not use normally. Mm -hmm. Perfect great Thank you both so much for describing that. I'm very excited about how we can work with you and help you do the amazing work you're doing more efficiently to more people through and from more producers. Thank you. Thanks too. And it gives us courage to be part of a much bigger world <laughs> of people doing yeah. the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks again both. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.